Kura. I can't mention names. Yeah, the and of name course, be... to my yeah. wife, Princess Jima Boate. Oh, okay. And then all women, Mama Stella. Yes. I can't mention them, so uh, I don't want to tread on that line. Yeah. I believe that. Well, it's. it's we I've been able to women. mention my wife's name, though. But Abedi, when you go to that Good, turn, yes. I think. I didn't mention you, names. You, you, you carry it you very you professionally. Many. No, and the uh, names so can be on I, I, I was just looking up to see that at least. <laughs> You play uh, one comfort for one night. Oh, I get it. Whether I'm coming or not. Honorable, honorable, trying to put it. Honorable, I am the host right now. Uh, so okay, okay, my, do your my work. Role. <laughs> Good. Honorable, we are going to look at the president's speech briefly, but um, what do you think going forward women have to strategically position themselves in, in terms of politics, academia, and other sectors? You were telling us your experience from the other villages where women play multi, uh, probably super task. multi. Yeah. yeah. There is no doubt that women are very preciously made, designed mm -hmm. for specific task. for specific task. And there, are, after Second World War, we mm -hmm. realized that they could go beyond yeah. what we perceive that. Yeah. should be their ultimate role. responsibility mm -hmm. or role. So from that time to today, I just mentioned Honorable Ajoa yeah. She's doing wonderful. She's, you know, I heard the voice of my mother, uh, Auntie Joyce. Yeah. yeah. And then my former boss, uh, Mrs. Gifty Lamte Lee. Yeah. And then, you know, a lot of women are coming up, Una Fabrics, a strong, whole lot of them, strong, yeah. strong, strong, strong women. I believe if we would understand to partner them, mm. we could have a very sanitized world mm. and get them involved. Because they have a special treat that women, we think that they talk a lot. But everything, if you've been consistent, all the things that they say mm. would come to pass. Mm. That is and true. I should also take this advantage uh, to let them also know that sometimes we are also made differently. Yeah, we're space setters. Sometimes we are robust and adventurous, so you go and hit <laughs> and you come and they are there. Go like and, 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 uh, I, I knew you going to come know, back. I know you're going to come back, but so they should pardon us and understand where we also belong. That. In all things is said and done, I believe that going forward, we need to encourage them in many other fields. And you know that women uh, cannot be that corrupt mm. by ratio. Yeah. So if they are found in very good places. They and actually end up and managing other it things. well. They do I very think we'll well. have a good result. It's unfortunate that some of our headmistresses and the ah. matrons are also finding yeah, their yeah, ways terrible, into yeah. terrible into corruption yeah. and uh, all that. I believe going forward, they, as they come together, talking to themselves, at least they should also, if they want us to give it all to them, mm. they should also try and do the best and offer the best to yeah. the society. I also have to say, uh, I yeah. didn't mean to mm -hmm. catch you, it just occurred to me, sorry, but um, Dr. Agnes Edu has done a very good job. The trade fair mm -hmm. ended yesterday. Yeah. I, I have followed it from the beginning to the end, and I must commend her. And there's also an international woman, so she's an international woman too. Yeah. So yes, kudos to you, Dr. Agnes Edu. And you're coming on the show to tell us every bit of what went into the successful fair and then going beyond that. Ghana Beyond Aid and probably the fair next year. Um, Honorable, let's quickly listen to part of the president's speech and then we get a few interviews and then we discuss into details the president's speech. So if we have the president's speech um, on standby, can we just play just a part of it and then we will take, we take it in bait or in stripes? I must first of all extend on behalf of all Ghanaians a warm welcome to our guest of honor, that sterling champion of the battle against one of Africa's most pernicious diseases, corruption in public life, Muhammadu Buhari. <laughs> President of the great Federal Republic of Nigeria, and his delegation. We are delighted that he has accepted our invitation to share this special day with us. Nigeria Mampeni Muhammadu Buhari 
Yamao, no Ahoka for a quabba strong corn. Sande Zua, Muhammad Bahari, Sugar Bankasa, Nigeria, Damutani Ka. Last year, at the 60th independence anniversary, I announced that on my way here, I had cut the sod for the construction of a national cathedral, which would serve as an interdominational place of worship for important national occasions. This year, I'm happy to announce that on my way here, I have unveiled the beautiful design of the cathedral that has been done by the world acclaimed Ghanaian architect David Ajay. God will see the project through for us. At its birth, great things were expected of this nation of ours, and even greater things were expected of those who would have the honor to be called Ghanaians. This is the country, after all, that blazed the trail for independence on the African continent. And with it came a grave responsibility to be forever measured, to be forever used as a measure of how the continent was doing. In many ways, we rose to the occasion. The many and varied peoples that came together through happenstance or deliberate actions to form the modern state of Ghana have crafted a common identity. We might be Dagatis, Sisalas, Dagombas, Mampruses, Gonjas, Kokumbas, Frafras, Grushis, Kusasis, Gans, Krobos, Eves, Fantis, Dentras, Gomwas, Gwans, Inzemas, Ahantas, Sefis, Achems, Akwamus, Equiapems, Kwahus, Bronx, or Ashanti. President of Ghana, His Excellency Nanadu Dankwa Ekufado. Good morning to you, your President and then um, the Vice President. I always say you guys are doing a very great job. Honorable Makuhine, Ghana Beyond Aid. Abedi, I have had an interview with one of my minority friends this morning on other media and I, I was sad. Why? Yes, because you see, it's about time we need thinkers, mm. people, visionary leaders. And luckily, thank God, we've had one. Mm. Less corrupt. He's been at a, a political bench mm. for about 40 years of his life. Mm. And he's a dreamer. Mm. So I think, I think it also boils down to the communication people. We yeah. need to sing down his, his thoughts message. and message down, down so that ordinary people. let people understand and buy into the message mm. so that we can all Push move as agenda. people. Because he doesn't even seem to get it. Mm. Because he thinks that it's not possible. Mm. But I know it is possible. Mm. Why not? Because we have a government who meets the banks and negotiates mm. that they should bring interest rates down. Now, yeah. What that are this very impressive. Because finance is one of the foundation pillars mm. for industrialization. True. And industrialization brings developments. Mm. And developments through industrialization brings taxes to the government mm. in return so that infrastructure of every nation will take its place from the taxes that have been collected. Mm. You understand? So if you look at the chain and if you look at the direction of this government, I think that we are on track. Mm. 
we are working hard as government through his uh, minister, uh, Minister of Energy. He has consistently debated, in fact, on this studio, that it is not the infrastructure that produces power mm. that we need, but the management of it. That is true. This is the man who thinks with his government that unless we are competitive in terms of power, mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to meet one businessman. There is a company called, I don't know if I can mention his name, B5. Okay. They have this uh, metal fabric, uh, metal producing company. Mm -hmm. They do these pipes and mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, oh, metal, a whole lot of metal, all that. And they have a factory in Tema, and they intend to have another factory at the, um, where the Central University is. Boom. Yeah. Very huge project. They need this extra power. Hundreds. And their contention so far, in fact, that's at last three weeks that I met the man. Their problem was power, because they were thinking if they could also go to our sister country, Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. And I said, why not? They have their drawing, everything. They have their money. they think well, Cote d'Ivoire's power. So I believe from yesterday, uh, from uh, 5th March, when these prices were announced, yeah. certainly you think of certain would make them Ghana. settle here. Mm. Because now, all this metal that we are importing, mm -hmm. They've cut it down to a very minute percentage. Yeah. It means, and they are supplying to most of the African countries. countries. Yeah. We have a government who is thinking that we need a railway. Mm. And the railway actually commenced. And the railway actually I, commenced. I have seen about you two you three understand? Regions where they if we are them. able to do that, you could carry this matter from Tema or Easily. Pum. Easily. Easily, cost effective. To Tamale, yeah. and then we have a depot there, and the other people will that come true. and buy two other ones. That is true. One, it is going to increase and guarantee the company's existence mm. in the first place, expansion, job creation, and then it's still going to make them competitive. Mm. Should anybody even think to come to Africa to compete? Them? That is true. And we should protect this whether they are Ghanaians well, or Ghanaian, investors, yeah. because the hub is here. And, and they are employing our people. Us. So Ghana beyond age, some of us think that, hey, it, it's doable. Yeah. And we must follow. And you see, we should not look at it that it's for only the president mm. who should make it happen. It should be collective. Mm. I like that. You eat, you do not throw the garbage into the gutters. Mm -hmm. To cost the president extra money or the to government clean it up. to clean it up, then we can invest that that money into something into else. our people. That's true. You take a car, you are a driver, and then you are driving. You should be conscious yeah. and think that every Ghanaian ought to be protected. Mm. Security is not just the arm robbery uh, uh, cases that we are having only. It is also about taking somebody from one destination to another to place, another place securely. securely. Mm, and accidents true. are even killing more than armed robbery. That is true. Much as mm. both of them are not good. Yeah. You see. So the the vision is huge. Mm. But we can do it as Ghanaians so easily. Mm. So going forward, I believe that we the communicators mm. should uh, decode it mm. to the understanding of Ghanaians. So that we participate as Ghanaians, of course, mm -hmm. being citizens, not spectators. Well, you what with if you if you're a spectator, you will not catch the message. Mm. But if you look at it from the, in the case, point, point of, view. of view, it's possible because we were here at our independence, where the then president, President Kwame Nkrumah, mm -hmm. was giving financial aid to Malaysians. Mm. As Tete Kwasi stole cocoa or brought cocoa from Fernando Po, mm -hmm. it's exactly what the Malaysian also came for, Pam. Mm. And now they're doing good. See, and now it's, it, it's the major economic backbone yeah, for, for the Malaysians. Yeah, yeah. And in Africa, in Ghana, just throw it away. Mm. It will grow and that you harvest true. it. We have the, you the don't power, even need to read that narrative. Yeah. We are so blessed. That so so why true. can't we have it? 
We have gold, we have diamond, we have bauxite, we have um, manganese, we have now we have oil, yeah. and then you can plant anything yeah. and yeah. harvest it in Ghana. Mm. Last month I went to Amsterdam. Of course, I know Amsterdam already. It's, they didn't even have a land. It just had a confluence where two rivers met with the sea, and they've developed that level to make a good city. And everything that they depend on in Amsterdam mm. is taxes. Mm. Just that. Mm. Apart from taxes, we have a lot of mineral mm. resources. Somebody was telling me that when they come to mine the gold, after all, what do we get? Really? So we can't do Ghana Beyond 8. That, that's that is, fine. That is a bit. If the interest rates of Ghanaians, mm -hmm. uh, Ghana mm -hmm. banks, yeah. Would go down and become competitive. Ghana Trust me, Honorable Kennedy Japan as one industrialist alone mm -hmm. can mine the whole Ghana's gold for Ghana mm -hmm. to our benefit. That is so true. You understand? Myself, I can do it because it's just finances. Yeah. I've practiced business, business for 25 you years. You can, why can't you set up a system that will, if the money is there? Our farms, if you go to Cote d'Ivoire now, Cashew that Nanado launched yeah. last month or this month? It was last two last weeks. Month. So we yeah. Have, oh, last two yeah, weeks. yeah, yeah, last two Probably weeks. Probably the end of last month. It's now been developed and it has become one of the economic backbone, yeah. the support. This visionary said this and it's, it was captured in our manifesto that he's going to develop Cashew Board. Mm. So in the next 10 years, mm. if we could raise Cashew to the level of cocoa, mm. And now we are pruning the cocoa farms. We are you see, yeah. everything that <laughs> this farmers, government yeah. is doing is an indication of that the fact that Ghana, Ghana Beyond Aid is possible I, and I is taking like off. Akusia's, Akusia's caption or Akusia's cartoon for today, he actually designed Nanado sitting down by the roadside with a, more like panhandling, yeah. trying to beg for panhandling. And mm -hmm. he's saying, well, I, I'm not begging you for it, but it doesn't mean if you bring it, I won't take it. That's right. And that is what uh, I just also interpret that to be. Well, we are not yeah. saying don't bring us. If you bring, we will take, but we are not coming to bring our bowls to your house and say, help us do this, help us do that. And I think that just the thought of it, you know, sometimes you can just think of something and you're beginning to take steps to towards what you've planned gives you that morale, that encouragement, that zeal that you can make it and actually helps you to make it just setting uh, the goal the goal abedi there is nothing that human being has done or could do without first have a vision or a dream you understand anything needs to be formed mm. whether it's picture or by design by right mm. if it's music anything before you can do it True. I listened to <coughs> my brother that I told you I, I had a, a conversation with this morning. And looking at his understanding, he was thinking that we cannot do it. And why should you even think that forever in your life you go on begging? I in the first place, forever in your life. If I happens to live with you in a family house, and it's your mom who cooks for me, a day that he decides not to eat, you have to fend for yourself. What would you do? And you don't have the money because that is your concept, uh, your, your mindset. You are con you have been conscientized and you said that, okay, now I want my hospitals to be built by somebody. Yeah. Nana delivered a speech uh, at the, the, in Dakar yeah. about also one month ago. Yeah. And, and he that says that, say that we can take care of our own people when it comes to corruption. You understand? And he says that, okay, he said that, and he says that, okay, if the people who we are depending on, mm -hmm. they are people because they pay taxes for their leaders there yeah. to give us aid. If their decision changes, what happens to you? You get lost. You get lost. So it's about time that we think as Ghanaian, mm -hmm. we think that we are able, we have the uh, needed, the lands, we have the natural resources, a few of the infrastructure, we need to develop them more. This does not even mean that we will not borrow, but we'll be responsible borrowers. Mm. This does not mean that if we need something, we will not go and beg. 
for our assistance. We will go. But that should not be our character. Yeah, it should not be the main focus. The main focus. So and we'll it should not be the main, uh, the source of our finance meeting our, our needs. needs. You understand? So this is what the president is saying. So you meet people with quote in quotes. Uh, I don't even know the word to use. That is, oh, if you don't go and take, how can you build Ghana? What he is saying, he is anticipating that maybe by the next 10 years, 15 years, it can even be 20 point. years. Yeah. But this is the drive yeah. Yeah. that we must, as people, stop being beggars. Yeah. I, re I read an article some time ago. You understand? Ago that says that, yes, I think it was talking about the 80s or 70s, that Nigeria actually used to give credit to the Great Britain. Uh -huh. yeah. And I was shocked. Like yeah. Nigeria Look at that. giving credit to Great Britain. And it, it, it talked about that those years vis-a-vis -vis right now that African countries who used to be like the backbone of the world mm -hmm. development are now going to the world to beg. And so I think even looking at what we the two of us are putting on, genuinely Ghanaian, originally Ghanaian, yeah. and it pushes money, just money into mm -hmm. the Ghanaian economy. Yes, yes. The, the seamstress, the tailor on the mm -hmm. side who can make this and make it very nice yeah. can also have something and boost or expand his, his, his business. That is also him as a seamstress or as a tailor going beyond eight. Yeah. Because it used to be, I mean, a few years, mm -hmm. eight, four years ago, they could, they could produce and people don't even like it, yeah. don't buy. But we took it up. Even the two and a man FM, mm -hmm. we had segments that spoke about finishing, yeah. about designs, about getting labeling, the labeling, marketing. And we saw that some of them were actually doing that yeah. and it's happening. Yeah. And so most of us decided to patronize made in Ghana stuff mm -hmm. rather than go buy Louis Vuitton, Michael Kors, you know. and all that. Who are already living lavishly somewhere in you France know. and Italy, and we deny our own. We only contribute to their income. To yeah. And then we go back to panhandle them. Like, okay, give me some of the money <laughs> I use in buying your Versace shoes. <laughs> yes. All right, I think we will have um, Honorable Ajo Safo on the line to talk a little bit on uh, International Women's Day, but also we have a surprise for you today on the show. He's actually a surprise. He's been out for a while doing good out there, but we just happen to have him here. I wouldn't mention his name. He will make your eyes pop. But he will come in for a few minutes and go. We're taking a quick break. And when we're back, we have Honorable Kofi Amwakohini here. He's the MPA for Atebu Amantin. He's also the member of the Vetting Committee, a member of the Youth Sports and Tourism Committee. He's also a CEO and an entrepreneur, a businessman. He's handling customer company limited t-shirts and more and many other um, uh, enterprises. He wouldn't want me to mention them. But yes, we're talking about Ghana Beyond Eight vis a vis um, International Women's Day celebration and the theme for today being pressing for progress. We'll be right back after this break and you can join us on Facebook Live at Net2TVGH, Net2TVGH, and then our phone numbers. You can WhatsApp us your questions, comments, and uh, ideas on 0240-550-899. 0240-550-899. This show is sponsored by King's Drinking Mineral Water. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to the show. It's The Dialogue. My name is Jonas Abedienim. You can follow us live on Facebook at Net2TVGH. Net2TVGH. Today is International Women's Day, and we have on the line one of our internationally celebrated women. She's very learned, a lawyer, honorable lawyer, Adwa Safo. She is the Minister for Procurement and the MP for Dom Kwabinya. She's a very tough woman. Yet, very pretty. Honorable, good morning if you are on the line. Morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. And you? We're doing wonderful. It's your day. You're an international woman, a representative of a very good and hardworking woman. Um, we just wanted you to talk a little bit about women. You're a career woman, a very successful one to be precise, and a politician. Tell us a little bit about women and how you've made it to this point vis-a-vis -vis the theme for this year's celebration, Pressing for Progress. The line is very faint. Can you come again? Can you hear us? Hello? Hello. Honorable, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, we are saying it's the International Women's Day today. So we are calling on yes. you to tell us a little bit about that. I have already given a background to that, but you are an internationally celebrated woman, a very successful one, a politician, right now a minister and a sitting, a sitting MP. So tell us just a little bit about and your advice to women on this day. 
Oh, okay. Thank you so much. I want to um, commend all women across the country, all over the world. I want to commend them for this day. This is our day, and we should all feel very special because we are all part of nation building. It's, um, our efforts have also gone into the development of our country. My brother, if you look at Ghana, for instance, women constitute 52% of our population. So for a country like that to come this far, it tells you that as we celebrate our 51st anniversary or independence, every woman has been part of what we are celebrating today. And so I want to urge all of them, wherever you find yourself, whether in the public service, whether as a politician, whether in the private sector, you are a very special person. And be focused, be determined, be hardworking. Do not take um, comments by distractors to heart. Just stay focused and God will be with you. You will succeed and the sky will be your limit. The theme for this year's celebration says pressing for progress for women. Um, I, I, I don't know if you... You've taken a critical look at the theme. I Come again. It, to, today, the theme is pressing for progress for women. And myself and my oh. good friend here, Honorable Kofi Amakuni, we were discussing it behind cameras. The, 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 the lot of work that women go through to get to the limelight. Can you speak to that? A lot of the, the bad things women have to do, some I cannot say on, on air, but... You know, when they're looking for jobs, you have to succumb to some standards, do some st stuff that you wouldn't want to do as a woman. You have been able to get to the top, going straightly through structures, going through your educational systems, studying abroad, working here and there until this point. So, looking is very bad. Hello? Yeah. Well, I was getting you to talk on the theme, pressing for progress, but... I think we'll have to call you back again since we are having issues with the phone line. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. We, we'll have to call you back again. we have to get back to Honorable Adjoa for again. I think we have having issues with her phone lines. But I was going to have her talk about women and some of the things they have to do in order to get to certain positions or get jobs in the past and if it's still existing. Honorable Amakuhini here was telling me behind the cameras how you can, in some villages, women carrying loads, carrying baby, riding a bicycle, or even being behind Okada with a lot of loads going to the farm, coming to cook, doing like a multifaceted work. And I was going to have her tell us a little bit on that. I know she's in procurement, but also she also represents women, both on the minority and majority, and what they are doing about it. So that was where I was skewing my, uh, skewing my question to. But yeah, we lost it. We'll get her back on the line if we can. Honorable, so yes, Ghana Beyond Aid, we, we have talked about how we as individuals and how we as a nation collectively can work towards it. If, if we have the second part of the president's speech, can we play it briefly so we, we, we can have some phone-ins? You can reach us or call us on 0240-550-899. 0240-550-899. And we are talking about Ghana Beyond Aid and also discussing alongside the International Women's Day today, what women have been through. And you can call us and tell us a role a woman has played in your life or a contribution a woman has made towards your success. So call us now on 0240-550-899, 0240-550-899. And when you call, please mute your television set or turn down the volume on your TV set. On number one, I'm <laughs> I try to blend uh, the coffee. Uh, I'm not going it's to okay. It. It's okay. I think uh, Ghana beyond it, yeah. like I explained, is just possible. Mm -hmm. We must think it, mm -hmm. follow the leadership, mm -hmm. and support. Because if we start seeing Ghana that it's a nation that belongs to all of us, mm -hmm. then we will build it together, yes. live in it, and enjoy all the blessings that God has given unto us on this land. Mm. Because we have no excuse as Ghanaian. Mm. Looking at the things that I've mentioned, the natural resource, mm. we are so blessed. Yeah. But uh, we need to...
to maximize the yield that we get out of it. Mm. And that is provision of capital. If we get the capital, we have the men to man it so that we can benefit, direct beneficiary of our blessings. But until we get there, and to get there is one of the things that this economic management team of the president government yeah. is doing. We try to strengthen the banks mm. so that we liberate them mm. from the task on them from the government. Yeah burden because I remember the past government for instance took almost everything from every bank but the past government also gave a lot of licenses for microfinancing and pro credit companies to also be able to microfinances good as they are ought to be regulated true I because agree. they are killing our women slowly mm -hmm. because you go to the market some takes as high as 10% nine percent seven percent in ghana for instance a student who has just come out of university yeah. takes maybe two hundred thousand uh, uh twenty thousand decides to maybe go to bring some few stuff from china you buy the stuff or a businessman you buy the stuff we have a lead period mm -hmm. for maybe two weeks to produce the thing it takes about a week to organize the shipment yeah. and then it takes about five weeks to get here yeah. Straight you away, have you have there. two months, eight weeks. Gone. You have about a week to get it into your warehouse. Sometimes you have about a week to distribute yeah. it. Straight away, it's taking you into three months. True. And supposing you've taken a facility of 100 million. And you're paying 10%. And you're paying 10%. My brother, already. That's about 3,000. It's 3,000 gone. 3, gone. Yeah. And then they have a ridiculous processing fees. Yeah. Ridiculous from 2% to 5%. You take money and somebody take a huge sum, 100 million, 5% takes you to about 5 million. Yeah. So you have 95 million to take home. You have not worked with the money. Mm -hmm. And then in three months before you get yourself set, you have accumulated 3,000. That is about true. It takes about two months or a month or three and months to sell. And some even come on credit. So by the time you are done, you are totally like out of done. business. Yeah. And then the fact they come and descend on you yeah, heavily. for the money. So first, it puts you in a position of indis indisposition in the first. So you can't even sit and have the piece to put the pieces of the business together. Yeah. You start running and short and scatter with them and then you just they just kill you. Yeah. You understand? And you see, but one of the reasons is that the, the, the finances are not available. Yeah. In the advanced world in America, when a nation was established, you go there with a proposal. Yeah. And the finance then you are given a, a little training. Yeah. I, uh, the uh, uh, youth unemployment is trying to come up with such models. Yeah. So that they look at the proposal, they get it set, they give you money. They give you just a two days seminar training, and then you are given money, and then you start at interest free. Mm. You know for you just a short time, money. as you progress, then you then you they'll get you to a position that you can pay taxes. Yeah. Then you start paying taxes and you start employing people. You understand? So this government is also trying to do something, replicate some of this model.